Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I'm starting off the show by talking to one of the top medical experts in the field of sexually transmitted diseases. He is the founder of one of the largest STD, HPV diagnostic and treatment institutions right here in California. Welcome, Dr. Arani, to Cali's Best Radio Show. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're quite welcome. You're quite welcome. Dr. Arani, by all reports, the rates of STDs, specifically here in California, are on the rise. I'd like to narrow in tonight on a conversation about HPV because I know you've been on the forefront in de developing strategies to fight HPV. So sure. can we start by just letting the listeners know what is HPV? HPV is a stand for human papilloma virus. It's a sexually transmitted disease infection that gets passed from one partner to the other partner by means of sexual contact or just by skin to skin contact on sexual uh, genital area. Oh, that's scary. Mainly. <laughs> that scared me right there. Oh, wow. So I, I guess I can see why the rates are on the rise. Right. In fact, uh, HPV is the most uh, uh, common sexually transmitted disease infection in the United States right now. As of now, 80 million Americans are infected with it. But um, the good news is uh, some of this infection uh, goes away on its own, but uh, some of them might not go away and manifest, manifest itself as uh, growth, as uh, like genital warts, or and can cause you know abnormal pap smear or um, cancer uh, on the throat, on the cervix, and so on. So you just mentioned some of the health problems that it causes, but sometimes the, I guess there are different HPV strains, exactly. and some of them really no. don't cause any no, problems. No, there are there are there are many more than hundred. If I don't make a mistake, HPV out there, and, and some of them are high risk and categorized, and some of them are low risk. And uh, usually, the one on high risk can cause cancer. Uh, the low risk HPV, as it obvious from its name, usually doesn't cause cancer, but can cause uh, anxiety, uh, growth, and uh, uh, other cause of complications for the patients. And so, say for instance, you had sexual contact or skin-to-skin -skin contact with someone who has HPV. Would they show? They would show outward signs of having HPV. How would you? Would you know that a person? Uh, yes. No. We won't know. A lot of time, the patient could be just a carrier, and there is no sign. Obviously, if there is sign of any growth the patient has outside, then we, we can look at it and be suspicious of the growth. But a lot of people just carrier uh, of HPV, and we won't know. Uh, luckily, there is vaccines these days, and we have uh, ever since the vaccine developed uh, for HPV um, uh, about, uh, I think, about eight, nine years ago. And the rate of HPV is uh, dropping a little bit and helping especially for the HPV-related growth and hopefully for cancer as well. So at your uh, diagnostic and treatment center, is the vaccine something uh, something that you give clients or what yes. other uh, treatment options do they have? Okay, patients usually come to us uh, for, uh, for growth-related HPV on external genital area and we evaluate them, we diagnose them. Sometimes people think they have HPV-related growth and they don't really have it. And we examine them, it's so misdiagnosed or this is not what it is. And people try these days our social media, internet, try to take a look at the photo and pictures online and Google. And uh, if they have, we establish a treatment plan and we try to help them out. The majority of patients, they get treatment in one session. We get rid of them. Of, of course, I'm very, uh, uh, I advocate the HPV vaccine from the day one. I really recommend uh, for my patients to get HPV and every, any people. Uh, uh, I think are sexually active uh, from certain age, age limitation the vaccine has, they should consider to get the HPV vaccinations. I know when the vaccine came out, it was uh, very controversial. Indeed. As with yes. all vaccines, it seems yes. these days, people are sort of skeptical. Um, so has there been any studies? No, there has been a continuous uh, uh, follow-up on the, on the vaccine and the safety profile of the vaccine. Overall, vaccine seems to be very safe and um, I, in my institution, I give it the vaccine to many, so many patients. I never had any significant problem for any of them. Oh, okay. That's awesome. That's good news. That's real life. Mm -hmm. You know, you go on the internet and you read certain stories. You don't know what's Absolutely. what's real and what's not. But when you have someone here who actually does it on a day to day basis and has not really seen any um, adverse no, uh, reactions thus far, that's that's very good. What other um, sexually transmitted diseases are like running rampant right now? 
right now the main one are uh, uh, gonorrhea and chlamydia and i have just done uh, one uh, 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 study in my institution and i would and i've uh, and we try to show that there is another std group of std called um NGNCU, which is non gonococcal non chlamydia urethritis. Uh, NCNGU uh, is our infection in the urethra other than gonorrhea and chlamydia. We know we go to the uh, clinic and get tested for mainly for gonorrhea and chlamydia, but one main thing was get missed all the time. Uh, you can get other bacterial infection beside the gonorrhea and chlamydia. And we put them in a the group, we call it NCNGU. NC NCNGU. It stands for non chlamydia, non gonorrhea and I'm gonna call it urethritis. So, but gonorrhea and chlamydia constantly are rising in the in, in, in whole United States and especially in California. I think we have 50,000 uh, cases of chlamydia recently in, uh, I think 2014 in California and about, uh, about uh, 10,000, 10 to 13,000 of the uh, gonorrhea. I have mm -hmm. to look at the number exactly, but in, where uh, your radio station, I think, is an in uh, Inland Empire, that number is uh, about um, um, 8,000 and uh, 1,300. Wow, that's, very, that's mm -hmm. very scary. I wanted to uh, speak to you a moment about the disparity amongst different groups of people. You sure. already mentioned sort of geographically here in the Inland Empire, but is there a disparity amongst, say, African Americans, Caucasians, as far as specifically these types of uh, Ye STDs? Yes, yes. Uh, indeed, um, because uh, historically we know, for example, gonorrhea are among, more common among white and chlamydia more common among the African American. And the reason is uh, the mainly African American, they are in their own society, they have sexual contact with each other, and, uh, uh, and Caucasian might have sexual contact with each other. Uh, uh, cases happen, but that's mainly when an infectious disease, it, it goes to a, uh, to a population or to society, it tends to stay there and it's like a, and it get transmitted back and forth between the, those society and those people in that society. Okay. And why would you think that here in the Inland Empire, as, as opposed to maybe Los Angeles or, some, or San Diego, that the gonorrhea and chlamydia is rising? It, no, it, it's not. Uh, it's rising everywhere. It's not okay. just in Lampio Empire. It's in Los Angeles area, too. I mean, the highest number of sexually transmitted disease, I know you're sure a lot about the music, and um, is a um, capital word of the live music where is Austin, Texas. So oh, okay. yes, at the highest number of rate of STD in the United States, and I think it's a lot to do with the music and people get to know each other, I think. And, you know, maybe under influence, alcohol, on this, they make poor, <laughs> they make poor decisions. But I really appreciate that you devote your time for public educations and uh, give this opportunity to public. You know. Absolutely, because it's kind of a, you know, this is not something you talk about, you know, every yes, day indeed. And yes. in your everyday conversation. So we're very um, happy that you were able to come by and, you know, educate us on some of these sexually transmitted diseases. I understand that you have developed a, a sort of a surgical approach technique. <clears throat> technique. Yes. If there is any way you can describe, you know. Yes. Uh, uh, when I when I established uh, focus on treating patients for sexually transmitted disease, I see a lot of patients coming for HPV uh, as per se genital and anal wart growth, and they've been going to different clinics and treatment by different methods such as freezing, acid, cream, and uh, so on, laser, all the things, and patients have a relapse of growth. You know, these growths are not mole or skin tag. You just can simply cut them out and they go away. They have a foundation and the virus will keep reproducing this growth back up. So it's very, they are very stubborn. So I developed this technique and I introduced it to my patient in 2007. And ever since I have treated thousands of patients uh, with this technique, we try to use uh, the digital microscope and we go to the foundation. Uh, it, it called uh, basal cell removal, BCR, I call it. And with three-step microsurgical destruction, I, I remove the growth and I go remove the foundation. I go uh, at the area that virus really attacked, uh, really attacked the basal cell layers. The, skin production cells. And so for that, that treatment gets rid of that 
episode. Yes, get rid of that. Get rid of that individual growth. We can guarantee right. you get the brand new one, but okay. that, that one, that particular one will go away. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. Mm. So go ahead and tell our listeners, you know, how they can connect with you or where is your clinic located? We cl- we clinic cl- located uh, in Los Angeles, close to the USC or Staples Center. And of course, um, uh, they can, uh, uh, if you go on uh, any Google and website and just search Dr. Arani, I uh, will come there, all my articles in there. But a lot of patients, it might be difficult for them to come to us. There are many clinics close to their estate or places they go. There are some places or maybe free clinic they can go, but uh, get, go there and get examined, get tested and get treatment. Right, because you actually um, developed some of the testing uh, yeah. methods for some of these um, um, STDs, correct? Uh, the, the you have test, a lab? We have a laboratory, yeah. Yeah, we have a laboratory, and uh, but, you know, the, uh, the laboratory I, I develop is... I thought we are dealing with some anxious patients and uh, they can't wait one or two weeks or three weeks for the test results. So mainly our laboratory, uh, DAML, we, we try to provide the same day test result for majority of STDs. So we give a result in about 20 minutes, wow. for example, for syphilis or herpes, uh, genital herpes, or, you know, uh, for patients with symptoms of gonorrhea, we give results of 20 minutes. So people, they don't have time. Uh, they're anxious. They want to know if they have it. They don't, don't have it. A lot of patients, they don't even have anything. They uh-huh. just want to have a peace of mind. Yeah. But if they have it, we will treat them right there. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Dr. Arani, for stopping by Cali's sure. Best Radio Show. And, uh, again, if you guys want to um, connect with Dr. Arani, just look him up online. Google. It's spelled A-R-A-N-I. And if you put in Dr. Arani and HPV, you're going to come to this man. <laughs> he even wrote a book, HPV, The Silent Intruder. You're going to find all that online. Intruder. You're going to find all that online. So appreciate you again, Thank Dr. You so Arani, for, uh, Dr. Arani, for coming by. We'll be right back after this musical break. Thanks. Mm-hmm.